Countdown to Eternity starts now. Well, hello, my dear brothers and sisters. I want to welcome you to another episode of Countdown to Eternity. And <laughs> if you knew the half of how hard we've had to work just to get this recording off the ground, it would make you laugh. I am with the wonderful, the great Pastor Tom Hughes. Bro, what's cracking? Well, well, obviously, the last little while was quite interesting, to say the least. And your your viewers will never know what it was. But let me tell you something, everybody. There are certain powers out there that just don't want these things to be happening. Oh, my goodness, bro. I, it's just, <laughs> forget, forget everybody else trying to cancel us out. How about the devils trying to cancel yeah, us no out? Kidding. How about that one? I, I think it's the devil in cahoots with um, certain government things. Anyway, oh, yeah. you ain't kidding. I don't want you to get kidding. you in trouble. So let's, let's just uh, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Joe, we'll just leave that one alone. Hey, bro. So talk to me, man. What's the latest and greatest? Um, not Mr. Ice Cream Man in the White House or <laughs> or uh, or cackling Kamala. So he is they are arresting political prisoners. That's what they're doing. And James, I believe. That that person in the White House is being used. Everybody knows. Listen, the guy's gone, right? Everybody knows he. This is impossible. I don't care if you're on the left or right. They're using him to flesh out people like us that will speak against these things. That's what they're doing. Oh yeah. I mean, you oh, start, yeah. you're, we're watching certain people being arrested. They want to put the fear in anyone when it comes to things we're going to say. They want to tell us we have. Well, you have free speech as long as you say what we tell you to say. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this is George Orwell's you're, 1984. That's exactly right, dude. You're free to talk so long as you tell you say exactly what yeah. I tell you to say. That's like the mark of the best. beast. If you can, so no, you, you have absolute free will. You can do anything you want, but if you don't take the mark of the beast, we'll just chop your head off. You know, it's kind of like, you know. bro. This is the very thing that me and you have struggled with over the years. It's the same kind of nonsense. Like we we always knew that this would come. We always knew that the mark of the beast would would be around the corner. We can it's like it's like you can darn near reach it, right? You know that it's happening, but the old, the number one question we always had was how in the world are people going to be convinced to buy these lies? And look at it. Oh. Like people are waiting in line oh. to just get slapped they hook are, line and sinker. There and people in churches are saying, oh, yeah. would you guys stop talking about these things? Everything's good. You just got to go along with it. That's coming from pulpits. They won pulpits over four years ago with the you-know-what. And then you come to October 7, they won the rest of those pulpits over. So there's not a lot left that are willing to stand up and just uh, speak uh, about what needs to be said. And, and, and yeah. so many people are just willing to capitulate don't upset my life. Listen, I've got a good life. I have a nice home. I want to, I want us to just be happy. You, James, you keep your mouth shut because you really bother me. So I wonder yep. if it's going to take that as a as a piece of me talking again. Yeah, they're going to they're going to take that right out of context. You're right, especially especially with all the angry people that put in the comments that oh, yeah. I talk too much and I don't let Tom talk. Yeah, it would blow your mind how many comments I may have got like five comments. Like, will you let Tom talk, please? Uh, you like, know what? That's funny. I, I can't well, win. You, well, you we know how it works, right? So I was doing a video <laughs> with someone one day, and the comments. One person commented. Tom talks too much. The other person commented, the other person talks too much. You need to let that. I was like, it's just nuts. Hey, so let's go back four years. Actually, we're in what? June now, almost July. So we go back a little bit more than four years. I remember you saying, we have to do more now than we've ever done before. Because you and I were already doing videos, right? We, oh, yeah. We are already doing this probably about once a week or something like that, twice a week. Yep. And you said, no, we have to go as hard and as fast as we can. We got to get the word out there and look at, oh, boy, everybody. I, I mean, you have to. And it's not slowing down. But oh, yeah. It's like we have to shout the warnings when we're seeing. I mean, we got the stuff going on in Israel. We listen, eugenics, you know, selecting the right people to live. This stuff is all that that's all part of the mark of the beef stuff. 
Um, we were watching oh, yeah. all of these different dynamics. We have the wars and rumors of wars going on everywhere. We have the threat of a collapsed world economy. Um, and the world is being set up for Antichrist. The world is totally being set up on both sides. Who's going to go with the mark of the beast, as you said? Almost everybody, apparently, is the way it's going oh, to yeah. look. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's funny you mentioned eugenics because that's such a big issue right now, especially if you allow yourself to just stop and focus on the grand conspiracy that's taking place. And, and the greatest conspirator of them all is Satan. And, and it's so interesting because right now the big hot topic that everybody talks about, I even listened to a conservative commentator the other day saying, if we as the Republican Party don't open up a little bit on the subject of abortion, we're not going to win these elections. Well, you know what? You can take your elections and shove them straight up your rear yeah. if it means we're going to kill babies as a result of uh, uh, you know making a compromise to win. These people have lost their mind. And I'm going to say this because it just bothers the living snot out of me. When Margaret Sanger planet, or, uh, founded Planned Parenthood, she did it with the sole purpose of the elimination of the Negro race. That's what she wanted to do. She wanted to kill black people. And when you think about it, 3% of the childbearing population that lives in this country are black women, yet they account for 50% of the abortions. They're already saying we are not producing black babies at a survivable rate, and we're also not producing babies in this country at a rate that's going to cause the population to grow. We are actually dealing with the population problem. So think about how crazy this is. As early as the, the beginning of the 1900s, we're talking about eliminating a whole population of people. Now, for the first time in our history, we're actually saying there's not enough people. So this is why we need to bring in the illegals. And this is why we need to do this. And this is why we need to do that. It's like so unbelievably flipping insane. Yeah. It's and crazy. Still, and still killing babies. So check this out. Uh, eugenics, I know you know this stuff, but a lot of people don't. So Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Stanford, Johns Hopkins, all did eugenics. Supporters included Teddy Roosevelt, Woodrow oh, yeah. Wilson, Big proposal. Oliver Wendell Holmes, Louis Brandeis, and Alexander Graham Bell, Margaret Sanger, surprise, George Bernard Shaw. And this is a quote from Margaret Sanger. Fostering the good for nothing at the expense of the good is an extreme cruelty. There's no greater curse to posterity than that of bequeathing them an increasing population of imbeciles. In other words, the people that are part of the elite, we need to kill them all. And it was H.G. Wells, who was a huge supporter of uh, the work of Darwin. And Darwin's survival of the fittest didn't work because he realized, H.G. Wells realized, wait a minute, the poor classes of people they have more babies than the upper class. So he, was, he became this major proponent, uh, uh, supporter of eugenics because he's saying, okay, since, the up, since our people aren't having enough babies, we need to get rid of all of the undesirables. And hence, this is where we are. Oh, yeah. And, bro, if they can do that, then they can do anything. Like, if you, if you allow them to take that kind of control and do that type of thing, then the sky is the limit. Anything that they want to do, they can end up doing. And, and you know, and, and they're talking about these things. Again, eugenics is back in the news. And, by the way, going back to what you said a few minutes ago, listen, I don't care what these politicians all say. Listen, this is, it's you're sacrificing your baby to Satan. That's what this is. Yep. It's, a, it's, a, it's a satanic sacrifice. And these people are saying, we want to be the political leader. Therefore, give your baby to Satan. Kill your baby to Satan so we can win. And this is it, it, this is totally a setup on both sides, whether it be the right or the left, for this government that's coming and Antichrist is coming. It's sacrificing your babies and stop with this stuff. When are you going to not compromise? It, it, yep. It's just this constant compromise for the political victory. Yeah, and bro, this, this brings us to a lot of other issues because if we're not willing to be aware of issues as major as our own people dying off, 
if we're not if we're not willing to actually be parents who will step up for the sake of protecting our children and being involved in their lives and considering and thinking about everything that's around us, then how much more are we going to allow ourselves to have our uh, heads buried in the sand when it comes to the world around us and all the things that are going on? When you look at the the nonsense that's going on uh, right now in Israel, the the demands and the screams that are being made by people about things that they have no idea what they're talking about. What about Nasrallah in the north, the, the leader of Hezbollah threatening to bomb Cyprus or the fire that's in Russia that we were talking about uh, offline earlier or some of the other craziness that's going on? It's like, bro, what, if, if we can't be as aware of something as simple as our own population dying off, how in the world are we going to make ourselves aware of all the signs that God has made available to us to know it changes around the corner. It, this is some heavy stuff. Oh, it's, it's super heavy. So I, I'll tell you what I think the problem has become in America. I mean, we can name a lot of them. But a huge problem is affluence, luxury. Okay, for this, you just take my kids. We'll let you have my kids for eight hours a day. You can train them as long as my life isn't upset. So therefore, the government is training your kids. Okay, that's there. Well, you just, you know, don't bring up, don't bring Israel into this because that's going to upset the conversation. I have Muslim friends or I have friends that just don't agree with Israel or whatever it is. And Israel's always been, always been this country that's always been a problem. You know what? We're done with Israel. That's what people are saying, even on the right. This is disturbing because the focus is going to be Jerusalem. It is rapidly heading towards Jerusalem. The focus is and right now, James, we are we are also talking off record. Is Iran said no? It, it's been reported for years. Hezbollah has 150,000 rockets, missiles, drones. Iran said no. With Iran, the Houthis, uh, Hezbollah, there's over one million that are pointed at Israel, and the unbelievable firestorm that that they are planning for Israel. Listen, this is biblical stuff. And what do we hear from people in the church, pastors? You and James, just stop talking about these things. You know what? Everything's business as usual. Our, our dad used to say Jesus is coming back. Stop with the nonsense. We're going to get through this. It's just another cycle and, and this kind of thing. It, uh, listen, yeah, this bro. stuff is and, going down. Yeah, and, 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 I, and I have to tell you this, bro, because it is really, really significant. The more time we spend ignoring all this, and being inundated with the infrastructure that the world has created for us, right? The, the world of wanting to be fed and entertained and uh, distracted with the many things that are in front of us, the easier it becomes to ignore the very things that are literally in front of our face. And, and we're seeing it, right? We have to start being able to get to the point where as believers, not just me and you, but as believers, as a body of Christ, we're connecting this stuff together. We have to be making these connections. It's super, super critical. Somebody has to make the connections because it's not coming in most churches. And it's and outside of churches, it's not you're not going to get a biblical connection outside of pastors, right? Or who are teaching Bible prophecy, I should say. Uh, they're not oh, going to get a biblical connection. So, so how can you even tell what the, what in the world is really going on when you see all these significant things taking place? I mean, James, we could talk about fifteen minute cities. I'm looking at those things, and the reality of it is, with these fifteen minute cities, they look very pleasant. You got everything you need: grocery stores, restaurants, golf courses. You got tennis, you got lakes you can swim in, all within these 15 minute cities. Everything's luxurious. But guess what? It's all part of that mindset. Well, just make me happy. These elites know, yep. hey, just keep the people fat and happy, and they'll go along with anything. That's where we are right now. And in and, and, and the mindset of the American, the, especially the American, is so set on luxury and affluence and just don't upset my world. It's Rome. It's it's give them a, a what is it circus and and bread and circuses right so this yep. is where we are and the elites know this it's always worked Satan knows this it's always worked and and we are being totally set up for this and yep. somebody's got to shout these things from the rooftops yeah and th and that was the statement of the Romans the Romans was we give them security we give them entertainment we give them food. Yeah. And and if we do those things, then, then we're good. But then we obviously know where it went. By the way, I do take exception to one thing you said. You said keep them uh, fat and stupid. Now, I'm not stupid, I, but um, I said fat and happy. Fat. So, oh, fat and happy? 
I said fat and happy. Oh, that's right. You said fat and happy. Hey. Not fat and stupid. No, I said fat and happy. <laughs> Well, I'm fat and happy. I take exception to that, bro. You're keeping me fat and happy. So what's going on? <laughs> you're good. Yeah, but you're not happy about what they're saying, right? <laughs> I got, you know what? Food is good. You took out I'm the word fat. This. What? I'm just having fun, bro. No, just, I know. <laughs> but, but, you gotta, but I got to admit, food is really good. When we get to heaven, there's going to be no gym, and we aren't going to need it. And I can't Ooh, wait. Lots of really good food in, in the New Jerusalem. Oh, this is going to be, it's going to be so good. It's going to be off the charts. <laughs> <laughs> and mm-hmm. okay being back but but really it's creating this just keep me happy skip let's skip oh that look part. you've it's now me. removed the word fat now yeah huh? i did i did <laughs> just keep him, <laughs> just keep him bro, happy i am fat and happy nothing wrong with that i got no shame in that just, game bro just keep him happy right that's what they're gonna do and this is rome so i mean when you start looking at the games like in the coliseum what do you do? You oh, yeah. increase, you know, I mean, you studied it more than I have. You increase the violence and it became a bloodlust, even for the people to see more and more. I mean, we are being so set up for Rome 2.0. It is amazing. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. I, I just, I, you know, you wonder every day what's going to happen tomorrow. But this is where it's going. But I also look at what's going on with Israel and we cannot take our eyes off of that because that is the, the real uh that's where the the bullseye is is what's yeah. going on with israel and the world is coming against israel anti-semitism is not getting better it's getting worse and i'm watching james this is the difference in, in with anti-semitism going on right now from the left the anti-semitism is kind of cultural and not real smart right why, why don't you like israel well be, uh well uh i don't well uh from the river to sea what oh, what river uh, i don't know what what's see they don't know Here's what, what's really troubling me is the anti-Semitism is coming from the right, because on the right, these people are, who are expo- being exposed now as anti-Semitic, they're thinking through it, and they hate the Jew, and they have, they've, they've determined a particular reason why. They know what river to the sea means. The people on the left don't even know what it means. These yeah. people on the right are very troubling as they're exposing their hatred of Israel and the Jew. Yeah, and I, look, the, the way that you can parallel this, because it is a really important parallel and one distinction that we have to discuss because it helps us to make better sense of everything, uh, is, is the fact that this is spiritual and what causes the right to do what they're doing, even in this situation, is uh, fundamentally based on a hatred for God. Um, there's a lot of people that call themselves conservative that hate the God of heaven. And so in, in, that, in that hatred for God, in that mindset that they're carrying on, in that ideal that they're beginning to push forward, they think that they can build or create some kind of an animus for uh, freedom, right, without the very God whose idea freedom was. So they're living godless lives. They're not thinking through things straight. They're, you know, partying and drinking and going nuts like the rest of them. And so their heads are not clear. They're not sober-minded. They're not looking and understanding how God looks at things or sees things. And uh, that's the direction that we're going. As a matter of fact, it's interesting. Two days ago, so Monday, this this recording or this uh, uh, recording is being aired on Wednesday. But two days ago on Monday... I actually did a video where I talked about uh, even this idea of uh, same-sex attraction being accepted even in the context of some Calvary chapels. Oh, yeah. And and, and how it's it's becoming more and more of of a big deal. And you guys know... All the people that watch us, you know some of the people I'm talking about. It's it's just absolutely amazing. If you're not willing to obey the commands of God, that means you, in essence, don't love him, which means you're going to go ahead and recreate him. And that's what they're doing. They've recreated him in his mind. They've come up with the new standard. Um, it, it's sad. And I'll tell you what, for those of you Calvary Chapel people, Chuck would turn in his grave if he saw some of the things that was going on, not only in his own church, you know, the church that he, the very church that he started, but amongst even some of the people that he, you know, was supposed to have discipled or or ministered to, because there's a, a, an adaptation right now being developed of a new type of Christianity that's fundamentally based 
in what I would call a hatred for God because that hatred is being exhumed through the uh, uh, display of a lack of willingness to obey God. And that's exactly what's happening. They don't obey God's commands. They aren't one of God's. They act like they are one of God's, which is why it makes it look like it's such a, uh, uh, some sort of an honorable or spectacular picture. And you see it happening time in and time out. I'm sorry. I don't care what anybody thinks. You are not genetically born that way. Okay. I have to be careful how I even say it because of what YouTube's going to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you're, it's like, if you're born with certain things attached, you're, you're that, you're, that's right. You're, you're male, right? That's right. Let's just go there. Um, you're, you're not, you're not a girl. You're not a girl. Okay. It's ridiculous, bro. There if, are people right now within the church. This is even something that you're seeing being, you know, communicated out of places like, you know, uh, these churches that we're talking about where they're, they're actually saying that, well, the, you know, L B A B C one, two, three alphabet mafia, you know, world, I refuse to say community because they're a movement like a bowel movement. But the whole idea here is, is that that people that are coming out of that world, well, you know, they, they're, God, you know, created them this way. And so now they're supposed to be holy and more celibate and more righteous, you know, uh, uh, singles that do a specific work, even though they are this. No, God didn't make you that. And when you were when you were born in sin and when you were born in wickedness and when you were born in evil, the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, what? He's a new creation. He's a new creature. All the old things have passed. It's the new things that are coming, right? Or even the Apostle Paul who said, I have been crucified with Christ and it's no longer I, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live is lived by faith in the Son of God who gave himself for me, right? It's like, where where did we lose sight of that? Where, like, where did that, where, what happened where we chose to basically say we deny the, the, the marks of freedom that God gave us because we choose to embrace unrighteousness. But that's what's happening. Uh, lo and behold, we're in Pride Month. God hates pride. I can, I can tell you where it came from. Pastors who wanted the, the, the praise of men rather than the praise of God. So what did they do? The, they, they start telling the people the things that makes them feel good, that helps them grow the numbers in their church, then the, the, the money will st- still come in and all of that kind of stuff. So that's what they're doing. And, and so it goes back to exactly what you said. They are being obedient to God. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me. And I mean, and, and if you take this approach, well, this is the way God made me. Well, therefore, well, what about the person that's an alcoholic yep. or the person that's a drug addict? I mean, just go down that path. Well, God made me, God made me a heroin addict. No, he didn't. Yep. Listen, you have to come to Christ. The first thing you got to do, because you need the power of the Holy Spirit. And then you make decisions in obedience to live for him and allow God to work out this in your life. But there's decisions that need to be made. But the first step is coming to Christ. So when a church is unwilling to do that, then what are you, what are you really doing? Are you really loving somebody in the alphabet soup community no not not really because you aren't telling them the truth if you're a pastor and you know that your only salvation is in jesus christ you you actually are refusing to tell the person the truth why because you love the praise of men more than you love god you're more concerned about offending them and it's okay if they go to hell as long as you get the praise yep it's so true bro and they believe themselves to be greater than the God that created them. And that's the darkness. And the funny thing is, God is continuing to give us signs of the times that we're in right now. It's like, how in the world can you look around and not see the things that God is very vividly putting on display for us? Look at what's happening in the Middle East. Look at what's taking place in Russia or Iran or or Iraq for that matter. Look at what's happening uh, all over the Persian Gulf. What's happening in the Red Sea? What's happening in the Mediterranean? What's taking place in the Indian Ocean and the Gulf of Aden and, and, uh, you know, the, the, the different straits that are constantly being controlled by these Islamic fundamentalists that choose to create or recreate a path. Look at, uh, uh, you know, uh, MBS who's, you know, even talking about, you know, threatening uh, what he's going to do with the petrodollar. And, you know, he's positioning himself. But it's like we're seeing all kinds of things being put in front of us 
that God is going to take and use to develop not only the theater of war that we read about in the future, but he's also developing the environment that is going to be openly amicable to the spirit of Antichrist and the final Antichrist himself, like we're seeing it. So why doesn't that motivate us to live differently? Why doesn't it cause us to think differently? I don't get it. Yeah, And people are just saying in the church, it's just business as usual. This is normal. I mean, look at the civil unrest. Look what France is going through, what's happening all over Europe. Look at our borders that are blown open. So now we have millions upon millions upon millions and millions and millions of people here in the United States. We have no idea who they are. We have no idea what their background is. And we know there's a whole lot of terrorists and really bad people. We know Venezuela opened up their prison doors and said, go to America. Those prisoners came across into America. They're living here. We have lawlessness that's about ready to explode in a way that we have never even imagined to this point. And, and, you know, James, you mentioned all these wars and rumors of wars. You mentioned all these different seas, the Red Sea, the, the Mediterranean. So you mentioned all these different seas. I look at that and can't help but think Luke chapter 21, the sea and the waves will be roaring. Kind of gives another, another picture to, wow, what was Jesus talking about when the nations will be perplexed, the sea and the waves will be roaring. You start looking going, boy, do we live in interesting times. People better wake up. But why did, why did God give us all these signs if he didn't want us to pay attention yet? 100%. The, the church is refusing to pay attention. And we're going to suffer as a result. Now, I will say this because I think it's a really, really good way to close this idea off or this conversation off, and that is there's hope. See, because we, look, we bring about information to people that tell them about the destruction that's in front of us. We tell them oftentimes about the things that we're seeing around the world. We talk about the crazy stands that humanity is beginning to take. We're showing how history is repeating itself. We're looking at all the different tendencies that exist among people who are waving their fists at God and literally flipping off, flipping them off. But the reality of it is we have a ton of hope in front of us because God told us this would happen. And if God told us this would happen, then that meant that means he meant to prepare us for what was to come. And the hope that we have is founded in understanding that God has something set aside for us that we might be able to experience the fullness of everything that he has uh, uh, put in front of us. And the question is, are we going to accept it, right? Are we going to find ourselves experiencing more and more freedom every single day by being bold in the stand that we take when we choose to allow ourselves to be given to righteousness instead of unrighteousness? Yeah. Uh, Tommy, we're running out of time, bro. I want to I wanna give you the closing words. Yeah, uh, so spot on. It was in the all of the uh, all of the discourse where Jesus told the disciples when they asked him, what's, what's it going to look like? He lists all the signs, and then he said to the disciples, see, I have told you these things beforehand. The whole Old Testament, God tells us the end from the beginning. Why? So we would know, so his people would pay attention. In Mark chapter 13, all of the discourse, Jesus said, watch and be ready. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch hmm. and be ready. To all, not just the disciples, because yeah. the, the the replacement theology people say that was only for the disciples back then. <laughs> no, it's for all. Jesus is very clear. And but again, it encourages you, it strengthens your faith. Yeah. But if you if you're not paying attention, you're gonna you're gonna get worried, you're gonna get anxious, and you're also going to either that or you're gonna be led down the path of just being happy and pretending like everything's normal when folks, it is not normal. Jesus wanted us to know it wasn't going to be normal, so we would look to him. Yeah, that's right. Amen, bro. Amen. And I could not agree with you more. More than ever, I cannot think of a better time to say, look up, because Christ could come at any moment. And we have to understand where God has called us to be, why we do what we do, and we've got to look to him. So, Tommy, I'm with you on this, bro. Great conversation. I hope that the people... Uh, that listen to us and around us will be encouraged because God's got this under control and we shouldn't be surprised with the things that we're actually seeing. So listen, you guys, on behalf of Tom Hughes, I want to thank you guys uh, just to tell you how absolutely blessed we are that you listen to us wherever you go. We were just talking about this, no matter where Tommy goes, he walks into the airports, he's, you know, going to other countries, wherever it is. Um, he's so blessed to see that people are listening to 
uh, to us that you guys are listening to us. You're such a blessing to us. You encourage us. You give us more motivation to continue to do what God has asked us to do. And we love you for that. So once again, we're so grateful. Thank you for joining us, you guys. We do sincerely hope that you enjoyed listening to this or watching it as much as we've enjoyed making it. We love you so much. May God richly bless you as we continue our countdown to eternity. Love you guys. God bless you.